What is your worst hotel motel experience? Planned a trip once and looked into motels hotels about 30 minutes outside the city. I can't remember the name of the hotel because it wasn't a national chain. Plus it was 7 years ago, and I think my mind's done its best to shut out the experience as best it can. Anyway, the pictures on the website all look nice. Rooms looked good for what I needed and with a free breakfast. What could go wrong? It was $100 a night. Seemed reasonable. So I get there, and in the large hotel parking lot, there are only about 2-3 cars outside. I go in, and it takes roughly 15 minutes for someone to meet me at the front desk. I check in, and start off to my room. The elevator door opens and boom, dark hallway, no lights. I was like woo 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 it. It was being renovated or something, and you had to walk through the renovation to get to your room. I get to my room, and it's roughly about half the size I thought it was. I go to the bathroom because I want to shower after a long road trip. I turn on the water and the cold water doesn't work. I turn on the hot water, and it never gets hot. It just stays cold. At this point I'm getting really frustrated cause I'm paying $100 for this experience. I'm so tired that I say frick it and try to take a nap. I go to sit on the bed and something moves. I don't know what it is at this point, but I know I saw something small move. I lift the pillow and, spider nest, WTF. I immediately pack my stuff back up and again walk through the renovation to the elevator. I press the lobby button, the doors shut, and, you guessed it, elevator gets stuck. Now I'm trapped, and after about 3 minutes in there, the lights also go out. I pull my cell phone out and try calling the main desk. It takes 4 calls before they pick up. They say they'll send someone. After 2 hours, finally someone gets the elevator working and I'm let out. After I get to the front desk and get my refund, I storm out of the place and toward my car. On the way, I trip on one of those long concrete barriers at the front of parking spots and promptly break my wrist. Great now I have to check under the pillow of every hotel I stay in for a spider's nest. Ask the dude for extra pillow. Started telling me H rates. Sounds like you accidentally cracked the secret code for how to order H. Driving cross country from Wisconsin to Florida. 3 o'clock in the morning, we've been on the road for hours, and neither of us can keep our eyes open anymore. We agree we have to stop at the next hotel, motel, holiday inn, anything. Shortly we come upon an exit with a hotel. It's easy to tell this, because its name is just hotel. We go in, and it looks pretty shady, but it's late and we're exhausted. So we get a room from the nice Pakistani fellow behind the desk. We only need a few hours sleep, so we request a wake up call. Opening the door to our room, we see that it's definitely shady, as everything in the room has been bolted and or chained to the walls or floor. At least, everything had been, because it's all gone now. The television, the mirror, the fridge, the end tables, the phone, they've all been stolen, and judging by the conditions left behind, usually a good amount of force was employed. We pile our bags between the two beds and both sleep with knives under our pillows. As I drift off to sleep, my exhaustion fogged brain catches onto an important detail I had missed earlier. How are they going to leave a wake up call when we don't have a phone? 7am. Knock 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 hello in there. IT is time for you to being awake now. Hello. You must be getting with the waking up. We needed a place to stay just one night after attending a concert an hour or so away from home. It only needed to be a simple place to stay, but I found a cheap little place with a spa in the room and though it would be fun to use the opportunity for a bit of romantic night away, we arrived before the gig and found the place painted a cheesy shade of pink, and the layout of the room was like a shady drive-in motel. Stained carpet and plastic furniture. The toilet broke 2 seconds after arriving and we had to call maintenance to fix it. We left for the gig, laughing at what a dodgy place we'd found ourselves in. Later in the night we arrived back at the hotel a little drunk, and ready for some fun in the spa. As soon as we entered the bathroom we were hit with the unmistakable sound of loud, obnoxious sex thumping through the walls. It pounded through the room and we giggled at the raunchiness of it, and when it stopped suddenly we panicked a little that they'd heard us. But we just heard chatting coming from the room next door. Smoke break. 5 seconds later, moaning and screaming. 
Suddenly, regular conversation. These guys were going from all out, crazy monkey sex to polite conversation in seconds. Eventually we realized, it was P. They were making P. This ebb and flow of screaming and orgasms and chit chat continued for hours, constantly, until they finally packed up all their equipment in a van at about 4am and went home. After 7 hours of hard work, I better recognize that room one day. This one is more embarrassing than anything. Family and I arrive in Hanoi, Vietnam, and grab a taxi from the airport. We already have a hotel picked out, and tell the taxi driver to take us there. We pull up out front, and we see a guy come from what we thought was the hotel to tell us that they're fully booked, but they have a sister hotel right around the corner. We say whatever, it's late, take us, and end up staying in a crappy hotel bad plumbing, dimly lit, smelled weird, for a couple days before we wise up and realize that we'd been scammed. We went back to stay at the first hotel, which was very nice, and gorged ourselves on baguettes the whole time. Dang I miss those baguettes. I worked at a hotel when I was 18. The worst part would be the ridiculous amount of guests that would look up P on the lobby computer. The lobby was probably about 30 featuring x100 featuring. Most guests didn't turn the volume off, and I actually saw one guy gripping his gremlin shamelessly one night. We notice water leaking through the ceiling of our room once. We call the front desk to investigate. It turns out some drunk guy passed out naked in the bathtub on the floor above us and his butt was covering the drain creating a flood in his room. Only in Vegas. Whoa. That was supposed to stay in Vegas. The time I crap in the sink. I was 11. And it was my first time overseas with my family. We just landed and I really had to take a dump. But I held it all the way to the hotel. We arrive. Check into our room and I run to the washroom. Now, this was literally a washroom. It just had a sink and faucets. Now I'd heard that bathrooms in France were different. That they had bidets. But I wasn't sure exactly what a bidet was or what it looked like. I was desperate. I really needed to crap and I figured the sink was the bidet so I hopped up onto it and took a huge dump. After I was done. I look down and the reality of the situation hit me. I don't know if you've ever seen a large, long unbroken log of your own crap in a sink, but it's pretty terrifying. Especially with your whole family in the next room. I try to flush it by turning the water on, but that just makes a soup. The drain had that built in cap that you can use to fill it, so it wouldn't drain. I searched the small room for anything to help, and my eyes landed on the decorative plant. I broke off a plastic branch and used it as a poking stick to try and break up the poo so it would slide through the small opening. I didn't do much good, so, being 11, I called my mom. She was pretty good about it, but it was horrifically awkward. Dang have an upvote for the laughs you just gave me. Undoubtedly the minifridge incident. My family had gone to Florida for vacation and were staying in a cheap but relatively nice hotel. After the first 3 days we noticed they had a mini fridge in the room, so naturally my brother looks inside. Some sick bastard before us had opened 2 of the soda cans in the fridge and half drank both of them, which placed back in the fridge upside down. After a few days, what seemed like the hotel's entire and population had swarmed inside the fridge through god knows where. When my brother opened it, so many came pouring out that it may have looked like a minuscule interpretation of the color and scene from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The fridge was promptly shut, and after my brother's quick shower, we decided we didn't want to stay in the hotel after that night. Now that's how you get ants. Cockroaches in a 4. Ended up catching a few with a glass and a piece of paper. Headed down the elevator with a glass. People's faces were quality, then leaving the glass upside down on the reception for everyone to see. I now realize this was probably what a top class Belland would do, but you can understand my anger. Some places you just can't avoid cockroaches and spiders without making the room toxic. The choices are, a, live with beasties, b, toxic chemicals, c, hermetic seal, d, leave Sydney. When I was about 7 or 8 my family and I stayed at a motel with a hot tub my long blonde hair got stuck in an uncovered filter and had to be chopped off. Never go into any hotel's hot tub. Just trust me. After driving for 10 hours, my husband and I stopped for the night at a days in in South Carolina dump called South of the Border. The hotel door wouldn't close unless you slammed it with all of your strength. The water coming out of the faucets was brown. 
the towels and washcloth were frayed and had blood stains on them. We went to bed anyway because we were exhausted and just needed to sleep, but we started itching like crazy in the bed. Bugs. We tried to report it to the front desk, but they didn't care, so we gathered our things and left in the middle of the night. I tried contacting the management and the head office, but they just emailed us back and told us, basically, that it was our loss and not to expect any compensation or even an apology. But they have fireworks, as every sign for 50 miles in either direction along 95 will remind you. Frick that place. A coffee plantation and spa in Indonesia. This place was extremely expensive, but in the end it was a disaster. My entire family went to the spa for a few days. We had never spent so much in our lives and experienced the full terror of this Indonesian resort. There were personal baths in each room. Nice right? Think again. The baths were unhygienic, and eventually my father got a bladder infection. Then, we ate their food, and their fresh prawns. My father then got food poisoning. After all this, we decided to leave for Jakarta. So we let the hotel escort drive us to the airport, which is a couple of hours away. My father was already very sick. He had a high fever, a bladder infection, and food poisoning. We were planning to bring him to a doctor as soon as we arrived in Jakarta. But something happened, of course. The driver misheard the hotel's directions which were correct, we confirmed this later, and brought us to freaking Surabar. Wanna guess where Surabar is? Well, it's definitely not Jakarta. So we return to the resort, and tell them of our woes. They give us a crappy room and allow us to stay another day, but they've already done their worst. We're 40 hours behind schedule and have missed two connection flights. Now, however, the driver is told that he will get fired, in undeveloped country terms, fricked up the butt, so my father tries to help him. They allow the driver to stay, and give him a few warnings. When my father got back to Jakarta, he was pee-blooded and in a terrible state. We had to stay there for a few days, in order to help him. That was a terrible hotel experience. Dang. Sounds like a pretty crappy holiday for your father. I was backpacking through Australia, staying in the most budget hostels around. After sharing a room with 23 other people for a week, I decided to splurge on a motel. I really just wanted my own room for one night. The thought of a carefree fap, without having to be covered, was highly enticing. After falling asleep in a blissful, post-masturbatory haze, I was woken up at 3 in the morning by someone banging on my door. I opened it to find an extremely drunk British chick. She pushed past me, walked into the room, crouched down, and took a pee right in the middle of the floor. Then she passed out in the now formed small puddle of her own urine. That was a weird night. Mr. F. I yelped about a hotel because it was the worst thing I had ever put myself through, only to find out they aired an episode of Hotel Impossible about it that exact weekend. It was pretty bad. Maybe I would have saved myself and run out if I had seen it, but you know, the television wasn't working in my room. Okay, maybe I exaggerated a little bit. The TV worked, but only played the Disney XD channel. The buttons on the TV itself looked like someone pushed in the buttons the same way that you push in soda lid buttons. You know when they bust out the black lights to find all the stains? It was like that, but without the black light. While driving cross country in the US, I was putting in long days and sleeping at very cheap motels at night just for a shower and some shooty. I didn't think it would matter how nice the place was, until I stayed at the last motel of the road trip, which had the coffee maker and hair dryer and the bathroom, as there were only two outlets in the entire place, and in the bathroom and one by the bed. There was a warning sign that stated not to use both the hair dryer and coffee maker at the same time as you would blow a fuse. There was also a bottle opener screwed into the wall across from the toilet, so if you wanted to drink beer and crap at the same time, you were covered. The windows didn't fit the window frame, and there was a crudely pieced together wooden frame within the window frame to hold the smaller window. Because of this, one couldn't open the window. It was August, and hot, and the AC didn't work. There was an ice maker down the hall, and the ice cubes had particles in them. Not sure what it was, but I did not think it would be a good idea to put them in a drink. The sink and shower made an awful noise when they were on. I felt bad for my neighbors when I got up at 5am to shower and get the frick out of that place ASAP. Bathroom bottle opener is a nice touch though. Might have to install one when I get home. 
This is the doggo for good health it only appears once in 1.232 millennium subscribe to up dude reddit in 14 seconds and you'll have good cholesterol again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.